Hey, thank you for joining us. I'm Shelly Marone. I'm a 2005 Stevenson College alumna. I'm also a member of the UC Santa Cruz Alumni Council, which supports the educational calling of UC Santa Cruz and provides volunteer opportunities for our alumni. Um, before I introduce our speaker today, um, Barbara put this in the chat, but I also want to encourage everybody to um, grab a few pieces of paper if you don't have some handy already. This is uh, going to be an active demo, so we encourage you to play along with us. Um, so without further ado, I'm thrilled to introduce our featured uh, speaker today, or maybe I should say our, our featured performer, Jeremy Schaefer. Featured I folder. <laughs> featured folder, that's great. Uh, Jeremy is a 1995 Porter College alum. He's also a juggler, magician, a unicyclist, entertainer, YouTuber, and of course, an origami designer. He's going to help us have a little fun today and demo a few of his original origami designs. Welcome, Jeremy. Thank you for joining us and take it <laughs> Thank away. You. Thanks for having me. So um, yeah, I, I've been really into origami design since I was 10 years old. And uh, uh, so at UC Santa Cruz, I uh, started doing an, writing an origami book and that led into this whole channel. Uh, so I'm gonna just start showing some of um, my original creations here. Um, this one, <laughs> this is, I designed this when I was in, was 15 years old. This is uh, a surfer on a wave. And when you move the surfer forward, the wave crashes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch to my um, camera. I'll, it's, it'll be easier to see this right here. So here's the surfer. And when you move this, the surfer forward, the wave crashes. And there's a shark that comes out of the, out of the water. There's the, the shark fin. And this model inspired me to actually take surfing lessons at, at UC Santa Cruz. <laughs> it was like people said, well, do you surf? Do you surf? <laughs> Finally I said, okay, I gotta, I gotta take surfing lessons. Um, this is a Swiss army knife. This I also designed while I was at UC Santa Cruz in, in the dorm, <laughs> uh, my first year, freshman year in college, looking around at things to try to fold. Uh, um, that's what came up. And um, this is an origami nail clipper. And this is a single sheet. They're all just a single square, no cuts, just, just folds. So there's a lot of math that goes into trying to figure out. Um, I mean, it's not math per se, but it's that, that part of the mind of trying to anal analyze where the points come out. Um, so let's see, this is more of a, a silly one. It's, it's a heart. It's a leaping heart like Roger Rabbit. Um, and this is a, a really scary one. It is. Wow. <laughs> um, it's also just a, a hat. Like that. Um, yeah, anything can be a, a hat. You just put it on your head. This right here is Swami Origami. <laughs> and so this is a flasher. And, and I also, while well, at Santa Cruz, I teamed up with another Santa Cruz uh, fella named Chris Palmer and together we had this like thing to try to make a, a paper that can condense into a small area and this is what came up came out it's a flasher we call it a flasher because it flashes and this actual model has been uh, has been applied by by NASA and is is now in in satellites I mean it's like it's not yet there, but it's that's it's in in works and projects to get like a satellite system uh, where it, a solar array. So this goes up in space and op and deploys, um, and it 
can do all sorts of things. <laughs> um, and okay, I have, this is a dollar, a $1 Golden Gate Bridge. And this is a car and the car goes over the bridge. This is called $8. <laughs> I think that's how much it costs to go over the bridge. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, this is a, an octahedron from a dollar. And so here's the, the grand finale, but I have to find, oh yeah, this is a tessellation. So these are all flashers from one paper, the 16 flashers on one paper and, and they open all at the same time. And these are two interlocking rings, but how many sheets of paper are they? It's really just one square. Holds up like this. Oh, I'm having trouble here. Okay, almost there. Almost. And then we do a magical twist fold like that. And then bring the ends together and apply the magical Velcro. And the magical Velcro. And there it is two interlocking rings. Ta da! Amazing. Thanks. These, this is uh, concentric six pointed stars and um, it opens and there's a whole nother set. And 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 a whole, they just keep, keep coming and coming. <laughs> and the whole thing opens up and it is another hat. <laughs> it all collapses back into, there it is, like that. Um, and I somehow, have... okay, one more hat. This is the, this is the pyramid of Chichen Itzu. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> it doesn't quite fit very well, but um, this is a model I didn't design, but I folded with one of my students. It's a Indominus Rex. That's incredible, Jeremy. And okay, well, I couldn't, I don't know what happened to my other flasher hat, but this is one of my flasher hats. Wow. Jeremy, while you're demoing, can I ask a question? Have you and, ever okay, done an that, art? No, I think I'm going to clear, clear the way for us to fold. You can hear me. So, that's a little demo. <laughs> Jeremy, I had a question for you before yeah. you keep going. Have you ever done a, an art exhibit of your work? I actually, when I was in at UC Santa Cruz, I, I had an art exhibit at the McHenry Library, an origami exhibit. Oh, well, okay. I don't, I don't know where my flasher hat is. It, it escaped me. Oh, I do have this other flasher hat. This is, when I, was at, when I was at Santa Cruz, that was the one year of my life where I grew out my hair really long. And as an ode to that, this is my long blonde hair. <laughs> it's... It's it's called this was about how long my hair was. And it's a barrister's wig. That's that's the official name of it. <laughs> Order in court. <laughs> okay. um, oh well. Oh here it is. Yeah, here's the hat. This is this is my the one that I use in my icons. So it's a flasher and I figured out how to turn the corner and it goes like, like this. So 
So that's that's the flasher hat. And now I must do the grand finale. Okay, here's the grand finale. This is the flasher Big Bang. Everyone say ooh la la, ooh la la. And la la ooh, ooh la la, la la ooh, ooh la la. It's also an origami yo-yo. Okay. All right. That's that's good. I think that we are uh, done with the demo. <laughs> um, so I designed last night. I just right before I went to sleep, I was like, oh, there's a Santa Cruz alumni event tomorrow. Hmm, what would be perfect for, for that kind of event? And so right before I went to sleep, I, I designed a really quick slug. So um, I wanna teach you how to make my new slug. That's the first one. Okay, so um, hopefully you all have square pieces of paper. Can you, does anybody not have a square that needs to, that, if you have rectangle paper, then I can quickly show you how to um, transform it. I don't know why these all have pieces on them. Okay, here we go. Um, so what you do to, to transform a rectangle into a square, you take the short edge and you fold it onto the long edge like this. And does anybody, is this gonna help anybody? Or do you want to, should we just go on? And then turn it over and fold up like this, aligning it with this edge. And then to get the square, you crease that very sharply and unfold. And you make a little tear right here. We're, we're going to take this off. You could just use scissors, but you can also tear it off like this. You just tear it all, all the way down like that. Um, okay, so I am not going to use this paper though, because I want to use I want to use a more sluggy color. So um, I'm going to go go with this paper. Okay, let's see if I can remember this. <laughs> I, I, I just thought of it last night. So what we're going to do is fold the paper diagonally in half like that. And, and now we're going to fold the two corners up to the top. Now here's where you get to decide how long you want the antenna. So, um, we're going, these are going to be the, the antenna. And so you, um, if you fold this, you could, you could fold this point in like that, and that'll give you kind of short antenna, or you could fold it a little bit more. Um, but keep in mind that this right here is going to be the length of the slug. And then this length is the antenna. In origami, we're constantly trying to decide the lengths of the different appendages of the models that we're we're creating. And so um, this is one of those things where we say fold to taste. So depending on how you like your slugs, how your slugs taste, um, you can fold that flap uh, like that. And you could either fold it like this or you could or you could fold it behind. Either way, it's not going to really make a difference. OK. And now, um, so here we have the two flaps. I just rotated it and we're going to fold this edge to the middle. So it's like that. It, it really doesn't matter. We could do this edge, but I think it's, we're going to, we're going to just narrow the, the point is to narrow the um, antenna. So like that. And I'm going to zoom in and repeat on the other side. So that way the antenna are narrowed.
And now is where we get to narrow the slug. So um, you could do it like this. There's different ways you can narrow it. But the idea is that we're just trying to fold these edges in. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go like this. Fold, so folding this point to here. Like this. And if you want, you can shape it. Um, you could fold a little bit more, fold these in. But the main thing is that what we're going to do is um, Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe we could do this. This, this is, this will be good. Just, I mean, the tail, the tail doesn't need to be sharp, but just kind of round it like that. Something like a leaf sort of shape. And then the last step, when you have this shape, how you like it, then fold in half like this. And here's your, here's your slug, and um, these are the, the antenna, so you can fold them up like this and maybe even squeeze them a little bit to shape. And this slug is, is special because, um, well, oh, you, could, you could shape it, because this slug, <laughs> it does, it can, it can do tricks. <laughs> If you if you hit this point, it can do flips. It's a flipping, it's a flipping slug, <laughs> and it's finger trained too. <laughs> it can it can do um, break dancing. <laughs> it's a break dancing slug. <laughs> oh, I guess it has to. Oh no, it works better like that. Yeah. Um, it can do a front flip or it can do back flips. <laughs> okay, done with the slug. All new. Um, does it, can, um, who, whoever folded it, can you hold up your slug? Cool, good job everyone. Okay, all right. Now I wanna show you another model that I came up with recently. I haven't seen this anywhere, and I think it's just very useful. And um, so I'm going to show you how to fold it. I think I think you'll like this model. Okay. So once again, um, square sheet of paper. If if you does it, um, everybody hold out your squares so that I can see that you guys have your squares. Um, okay. This so white side up. If you just, yeah, if you happen to have origami paper. Okay, good. All right, so what we're going to do is um, fold two opposite corners to the middle. So um, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit now. Okay, I'm trying to do this without any creases. If you want, you could fold the paper in half both ways to get a, a, a middle point, but that's not really necessary. It doesn't need to be perfect. Just try to try to make it so that these look like squares. Okay, and now fold. Yeah, just get. They don't even need to be touching perfectly. It's it's just just it do, it doesn't need to be perfect. Okay, now fold this bottom point up. How far? You want to fold it so that it goes right in between these two points, like this. And now fold, okay, so we have a little upside down heart here. Now fold this flap up. How far? You want it to make a, a triangle here. So fold it beyond Fold it about like this. So you see these flaps overlap and we have this triangle here. You could go anywhere from he here to here as long as, as you have that triangle. And now unfold this flap and 
unfold these flaps and refold this flap and refold these flaps. So we just we just switched it so that these flaps are on top. That's that was the really the only point of doing that. Okay. And the last step is you take this flap and you just stick it inside and we have this really nice envelope that actually holds together. I mean, it's, it's right there. And, and so you can either use it as an envelope or just as a note thing where you can write, write a note and, and, and close it by doing this fold. And I, I just find that really pleasing as a, as a, as a model. And, and on this side, it's completely clean. So no, no folds. And that's the new envelope. I don't even know what to call it. Um, okay, I want to show you how to fold the 10 second fish. So um, no, I don't want a red fish. I want, do I want a rainbow? Okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to go rainbow fish. Okay, so begin white side up and fold diagonally in half. They're all folding diagonally in half. Okay. I'm gonna wait till you guys have your papers folded. Okay. So <clears throat> after you fold the in diagonally in half, um, fold up like this. And fold again. It doesn't need to be perfect. We're just estimating. So we just made two folds. Do you guys have this? So this is like a, a, a dinosaur snake. You see it has a big spike on its back. Okay. <laughs> and now uh, fold it in half. So the snake is inside the is inside the spike. And here we have a bunny rabbit. <laughs> you see, those are the two ears and that's the head. <laughs> it's a bunny, but no, uh, th that's not the, the final model. Uh, unfold, we just wanted to get the middle line. And now fold this edge onto that middle line. So it's like that. And now we're going to do the same thing on the other side, but not in front. We want to do it on the back side. So turn over and now fold this edge to the crease like that. And here comes the aha moment. We're going to switch these two flaps like that and it locks. And the, and the last step, you want me to do that again? Okay, so one flap is on this side, the other flap is on the front. And what you do is you take this flap and you put it behind the other one, like that. And now it that locks it. That's, that's the trick. And, and now there's one more step to make it look a little bit better. And that is turn over and take this point and slip it into this pocket like this. And here we have a pretty um, fish, the 10 second fish. And it's not just any fish. This is the flicker fish. So you, if you hold it like this, you can flick it and it uh, hopefully flies like a frisbee. And uh, maybe you could play ultimate frisbee with it. I remember UC Santa Cruz had like the national championship ultimate frisbee team. I played ultimate frisbee a little bit, but I was not, never into like the competition stuff. Um, okay, what am I doing? Oh yeah, I want to show you 
one more model. This model, I can, we can do just um, in the air. I well, I'm going to do it in the air. You should do it on the table. Okay, so you fold it in half like this. Actually, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it down here. Okay, fold it in half, and now just fold this flap up. Just fold it up and up and up and up. Just keep fold flatten. Fold up and flatten. Fold up and flatten. Keep going, keep going. All the way up. Try to keep it centered, but not really that important. And here we have a chopstick. <laughs> um, no, that's, that's not what it is. I mean, it is a chopstick. You could fold two and you could actually maybe have you eat your origami fish. <laughs> it, yeah, here, I just thought of this. It's, it's a... It's a fish kebab. <laughs> Instead of a shish kebab, it's a fish kebab. Um, you can get, you can spear, you can spear your fish. <laughs> wow, survivalist um, work on me folding. Okay, now what this is, is this is the flying candy cane, the magical flying candy cane. And the way it works is you hold, the two opposite corners, one flap in one hand, one flap in the other. Make sure it's horizontal, not vertical, but horizontal. And slowly open like this, open, 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 and let go at the same time, and it spins down. And, and it actually goes forward. And what's really cool is that once it's open like this, you could just... Um, throw it up and it should just kind of turn by itself. Yeah, yeah, now just let it go. Judy, just let it go now. Like th throw it up and, and watch it spin down, yeah. And and it can, and, and you can also throw it under spin like this and look how it flies. You just, it kind of rolls off your fingers. It's, 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 the, it's the magical flying candy cane. And I, I love it because almost anyone can fold this. So like, even even five year olds can do origami and you know and then they can play with it. Right? It's you know a really nice nice model. So um, okay, well I I'll take a four couple more um, uh, minute a few more minutes for for questions Q and A or um, what um, we're we're officially done, but may, I can I can I can go a little bit longer. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Any questions um, from anyone? Open. Everyone can unmute. Um, yeah. At this point. Yes, you're all on mute. So if you have a question or a comment, feel free to unmute and jump in. Yeah. Did were you guys able to to fold? Did you get some good yeah. ideas from from it? Great ideas for the for the kids and the grandkids. Yeah. Thank you, Jeremy. That was for really me. great. Really appreciate it. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. This is a, a really fun alumni week activity and I hope you all learned a new party trick or two. <laughs> um, as a reminder, we have um, 70 events happening as part of alumni week. So there's um, something for everybody. And I hope that um, you've taken a look at the list and registered for, for other events. If, if not, please check out that list. Um, I also wanted to uh, encourage any of our audience members who might be interested in volunteering with UC Santa Cruz in any way to um, get in touch with us. You can email alumni at ucse.edu and we can um, help you find a way to get involved. We could use all the help we can get. Um, we would also be so grateful if you all were able to make um, a donation of any size this week to support the campus and its students. Um, I'm especially passionate about the Alumni Association's um, scholarship fund, uh, which provides uh, our students with financial need and high academic uh, standing with a $3,000 annual scholarship. We actually awarded 49 scholarships this year, um, and we really hope to, to grow this fund so that we can support even more of our students in the future. Any gift is appreciated. It all makes a difference. And uh, I wanna thank those of you who have already donated um, this week or in past. 
Information and links about all of this um, are available in, in the chat box. Again, if you um, have any questions, feel free to email us at alumni at ucse.edu. And thank you again for, for joining us.